cannot end. So I believe that the, the healthy way to do it is different proposals with different sensibilities, with different focus, and then networking as we are here, like different persons with different ideas in their head, but networking at some level, not with everything and for everything, We're just being married, which is something different. But, uh, but we can uh, be linked for, I don't know, sport things, and you have some links, and then other for religious issues or then political issues. So I believe that this is one important, at least it was one of the outcomes that I take out of that work. And in the CIC, yeah, there were some bodies of people who tried to help in conflict resolution, and we had, there were some people, a team specialized on that also, and trying to go to communities, and when there was a conflict, trying to solve it. I don't really believe too much on that, because it's like a couple thing as well. I mean, we can have a psychologist or something, no? but if it's a couple problem, it's something about this couple, no? and you cannot have a standardized methods. No? It, every people, every person is a universe, no? and every relation is a universe, so it's something in between there, no? so every community as well. No? So I don't believe uh, too much in standardized ways of, of resolving conflicts. I believe more in how to try to avoid the conflicts. Concept of the network um, and in a lot of um, like social, social and cultural theory, the idea of the network is kind of a trendy thing, or it's a you know it's a thing. Mario Castell talks about in Saskia Sassen and like the the concept of the network society as one, um, and I find it really interesting when you talk about your experience, you know, of um, being in the <clears throat> in these kind of squatted um, you know utopian places in the city, and then realizing that from those experiences you want to take it out back back to the roots kind of because a lot of people you know since the 60s have been doing that um and and initially when you gave the talk i was like oh okay this is just typical he's just gonna go into the mountains you know and like fuck the punks kind of um but my question is um more um and i guess it's more of a comment but um because i'm skyping like sitting here skyping with you um but i guess my question is do you think that um, this kind of development, because I, I find it really interesting that you're talking about these networks, and that's what makes you different from just going into the mountains, right? Um, and so, like, you know, these networks of resistance also, um, or these local spaces, places, places, of spaces, whatever. Um, but do you think that, you know, the what you are building up now with this kind of network of resistance, do you think that that would be possible without the current technologies that we have today? For example, like say, could you build something like this up 30 years ago? Or if you know there wasn't like the internet or something? Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting question. Yeah, well, no, I believe precisely. Uh, well, my book, uh, Wiki Across It, talks about that uh, deeply. Uh, but mainly the main idea is that, that precisely, yeah, no, I don't believe. See, I believe that now the technologies of information and communication, they, they, they are pushing us, not only inviting or allowing us, but they are pushing us to a social big transformation. And what we have now is a crossroad between uh, the societies that the, the, the TIC, I don't know in English, the, well, the technology is the internet, let's say, they are a crossroad between the society where they are pushing us, which is this, for me, wiki crazy or eco-libertarian or peer-to-peer -peer societies, and then what we have now, which is a hierarchical, uh, oligarchy, not even capitalism. What we have to fight is not capitalism, it's oligarchy. This is what we have. We have a, a, so it's not, it's not even free market where I can do a big, a new company and, and no, it's big, big companies, and it's oligopolies, it's centralized. That's why Catalan anarchism in 1936 was beaten, which Orwell explains very well, by the USSR. By, by Europe, countries, by fascism, obviously, because it's the only decentralized structure, no anarchism. All the rest, they are centralized structure. Whether it's social democracy, with their national school, national, et cetera, whether it's uh, capitalism, because it's oligarchies, Standard Oil, uh, Microsoft, Apple, Google, whatever, or, of course, fascism and, and, and communism, no? state communism. And so anarchism is decentralized. 
So what we have now with the internet, it's uh, pushing us to our society like that. Uh, th uh, unfortunately, in 1936, in Barcelona at least, and in Catalonia, where we have the, st the, the, the strength and the, the vision and the political vision that we now, young people, even academic people, even sort of revolutionary or alternative people, we don't have, they had it in 1920s, 1930s, at least in Catalonia. We had a much more consciousness of class and ability to create the structures without internet. With the internet, we have won, we would have won the revolution. Uh, so now we have these possibilities. So technology now is pushing us to a decentralized society. So Wikipedia is much more efficient than the British Encyclopedia. Linux is much more efficient than Microsoft. Uh, Agroecology and permaculture is much more efficient than agroindustry, uh, Monsanto. The thing is that they have a lot of power, big media still, all the newspaper, all the universities, like yours and mine, and all the schools, they control everything of that, and they shape still the heads of people. But but the means, the technological means, and Castells also says that, no, we, uh, anarchism in 1936 was advanced to its, to its time. No? Now it's a time where we begin to make it much more possible an eco-libertarian society or, a, or a, a libertarian communist society where, because Wikipedia is that. I mean, everything is that. Peer-to-peer -peer is that. In Wikipedia, everyone can write. You're free. You are, we are all equal. Peer-to-peer -peer is this. No? And peer-to-peer -peer foundation as well. There's a nice studies on that. Uh, well, as I said in my book, it, it is much more detailed. But so, yeah, I believe that these technologies so it could happen before. Many things like barter, barter schemes, they, they began before, I mean, in this new wave, since the 1980s, you know, because also has always been you know, the barter economy and local currencies as well, of course. But now in these new schemes, it began in 1918. And we are very fortunate in our generation, let's say, because we, at least I have seen completely coming from the machine, writing machine to the computer, the internet, and we have seen all this progression. So I began with barter networks. They had to be done by paper, everything. And it was very difficult. Then we had to put it into the computer in South America. It was, and now with this, it's a good example, no? with some software that we have, like ours, integralsess.net, you can just create a new barter network in two seconds. And you can create your account in one second. So this makes it much more easy. Before we have to do a big coordination with 10 people passing all the checks in the lead systems or whatever. So now it's much more easy. The same thing with everything. So this, I believe that this is creating a new revolution, internet, that we still are not allowed to be able to understand what we have there. And mainly because we are still shaped by hierarchical, pyramidal uh, structures, like in university. I was I worked in a while in university until I was fed up with the military system of universities. You know, I don't want to stay the military system like that, so because you have to go up and so and now it's much more interesting in a decentralized. And in fact, we are doing, for instance, university. And I said that to my boss when I quitted the university. I said, Man, I will go to social movements because I believe that we will advance much more. And we did it. We create a network, new models of economy, new models of society, with that, together with much more people. So I believe that there's much more. So we have to combine these two things. No? So I believe that the thing is to have the focus in, in the new things, then profit from the old things and try to do this transition. But we are, I am very clear that internet is, is, is pushing us to, to a new society, which is a peer-to-peer -peer society. No? Whether that or fascism. No? There we are, there we are no? in this crossroads. Okay, good question. Ale will talk about that <laughs> much better than myself because he's a he's a hacker. But just let me tell you something. In my, for instance, I don't I don't use any encrypted stuff. My most of my friends in the CSC, many many of them, they use it. Uh, in my experience, my way to defend myself in this let's say revolutionary or social transformation proposals is not doing anything illegal. I mean, I don't need to do it. My friend, Henri, no, our friend, he tried to, he did it, and the cost is very high. You, know, you have three years uh, away, even if he did it with encrypted methods, and he, he lives in encrypted methods, of course, now. But even like that, you have to be, well, it's, it's a hard 
way you know, for for me, no. And for me, it's like uh, also say like a soccer a soccer team. I'm not very into soccer, no. But but you have to have a good uh, attack and a good defense. For me, having a good defense is doing it legally. And for me, this is a fantastic defense. So now we are in a point where the, the elite is the one who is cheating the law, who is doing fraud in many many fields, in economical fields, in taxation, and also in surveilling us when we are not suspicious of terrorism. So they are breaking the law, especially in Spain. I don't tell you, well, it will take just one hour to explain you what is happening now in Spain. But we have ministers of interior do, breaking the law in order to... to, 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 to to prosecute you know, Catalan independentists who are fully legal and fully democratic, for instance. No? So now it's, uh, it's the big institutions who are being illegal. And we, I mean, from my understanding, besides uh, squatting and sometimes somehow well, somebody is smoking some dope, nobody's doing nothing illegal in our social movements, in fact. We're even, we're even uh, I mean, we are respecting the law. Uh, so there's no way that they can prosecute us, there's no excuse for them. So this is my way of doing it. I believe in that, and we can do revolutionary currencies, which is another of the big things of, of these proposals that I, I talk about. That they are simple, they are legal, they can be done with people without high studies and stuff like that, and they are at the same time revolutionary. And they don't need you to, to, to assault the Bastilla or the the, the Palacio de Invierno, in, I mean, you don't need to, to make a revolution for, for that. You're doing it by walking, you're creating a revolution, like free software, you're creating this revolution at every new step. So, for my understanding, I don't really need that, and then I don't really believe in encrypted things when it comes to really threatening power, because Bitcoin, well, I had a, uh, I had a little account with Bitcoin that was blocked, for instance, by the state, or we don't still know what. But so it's not always that secure. Uh, it's secure for your neighbor not to know it. But if the CIA or the FBI or Interpol wants to get there, uh, maybe I can talk more about that. But I think it's not that that safe as we believe that, that it is. So I believe it's safer not to need to be hidden. So for instance, also people when they come to, to do a documentary to us, some friends said like joke, you know, maybe they are from from the FBI or Interpol, and they are just with the camera, and they will say, well, yeah, but if they are not, I mean, the video that they will do, it can be seen by the Interpol as well, no? So I prefer to be able to make a documentary or a conference like that to you, and whoever wants to see it, and, and power also can come and see it, and, 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 and be part of, in our side of social transformation. I believe more in that than hiding ourselves, because we're not doing anything bad. We're doing, we're the good ones, I believe, uh, simplifying, but we are the good ones of the, on the film, and the bad ones are they, they are the ones who need to be uh, uh, with cryptography. <laughs> they are the ones who are breaking the law. But, but well, there's my understanding some other friends, more in hacker or more in more uh, specific struggles, can use crypto, crypto things, and good for them. <laughs> for me, it's too complicated. Well, I'd say in the Cooperative as well. There's, a, there's a, always been a, an intent for, for the more from the more techie people to, to get everybody to use PGP, to get everybody to use end-to-end -end encryption, and to stick to step authentication. All these kind of little practices that make things simpler, but it's really hard. Mm -hmm. And you've got people who are agricultural kind of um, experts, so they they want to work on how to make their stuff grow. They don't really want to get involved in technology. So the best, I guess the best uh, security is really to have person-to-person -person meetings. And a lot of the time, maybe mobile phones will be out of the room or laptops won't be in, uh, allowed in the room if it's mm -hmm. to do with financial stuff or to do with, with something to do with money. Um, but that's mostly against inspections. And really the, 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 the efforts that we've made towards security and, and towards having our own systems have always been because we want autonomy in that area as well. It's not really because we want to we hide it too much. I mean, we've, we like making it a difficult job for them to follow us what we follow what we do, but we also think they're probably doing it. So, so I mean, we, we just want to have our own systems, and, and we've we've had a few kind of uh, points uh, in the journey uh, from from where we started off, because in the beginning we wanted to replicate Facebook and have our own kind of Facebook, which was Loria, the Loria kind of network, which was like a, a kind of a second generation social network where we it was all completely encrypted and all very kind of. Uh, um, run from local servers, a bit like, uh, I guess, there's a few social networks that do this now, 
but um, it became a huge effort and they were like, um, not just in our node because we were just one small small part of this network that, that was part of the Seek, but we also ran all the 15M, which is like the Occupy um, kind of movement in, in, Bar in, in, in all of Spain. So there were like 50,000 people on this, on this social network and it was really hard to maintain. So after the 15M's initial burst of tech, techie people, um, they all went off to do other things and then the slowly this, this uh, website died. Okay. So now we're all following, trying, trying to do more distributed um, routes so where everybody kind of works on one small tool. And in the cooperative, they're trying to work on RetroShare, which is another distributed P2P um, social network. But um, I'm not sure if they're going to take it on or not. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Should we close the, this part of the discussion here? Mm -hmm. Do that and then maybe have a small break and then uh, return with Ali and sure. his presentation. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Alright, five minutes. No more. Welcome to Catalonia. Anyone? Similar projects. I come to Denmark. Ah, yeah, welcome. Yeah, next time. Of course. Yeah, yeah, I love to. Mikasa, I took a.